Mommy! I was afraid you were hit. Let's get away. Mommy! Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those. Samson and Sally, also known as Samson and Sally, The Song of the Whales, is a Danish animated film released in 1984, based upon the novel The Song of the Whales. The film was directed by Janik Hastrup and produced by Dunch Tengerfilm. Two names I'm sure I've no doubt botched, but I'm sure you'll happily correct me in the comments. Before hearing recommendations of this, I'd never actually heard of this film before, and from researching online, there doesn't appear to be much info on it at all, which is surprising as it's quite the interesting watch. For all the wrong reasons, of course. Yeah, despite looking all cute and innocent on surface level, the film actually has some pretty dark moments scattered throughout. We get blood, death, and some really depressing themes. So of course in the UK that qualifies it to get the U rating. That means it can be seen by people of all ages, and there will be nothing unsuitable for children. Yeah, we'll be the judge of that. So let's take a deep breath as we dive into the depths to take a look at Samson and Sally. But first, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35? Well, Keeps is a subscription service that will help men hold on to their hair. With clinically proven treatments that combat the symptoms of hair loss and improve hair growth. With a plan that's personalized just for you and delivered straight to your door. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Their treatment plan will also offer a year of 24-7 care and support, where you'll have unlimited messaging to connect with your prescribing doctor. All this for a price which is typically half the cost from a pharmacy. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Steve Reviews, or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Steve Reviews. Thank you for listening guys, now back to the review. The film opens up with sounds that remind me of Echo the Dolphin. And we're presented with the opening title, which though meaning to be cute with using the whales to help spell their names, more just looks like they're dick thrusting into the letter A. We're introduced to our main character, Samson, who's a young white whale, who's chatting with his seagull friend who quite possibly has the most annoying voice in this film. Hey girl, take it easy! You can at least let me know when you're gonna sneeze like that! The opening few minutes of this film does have a bit of a clunky start, as it's just Samson and the seagull on screen. But the conversation they're having is clearly just there to lay down some exposition onto the audience. Boats are referred to as iron beasts, Samson is afraid of them but is too ashamed to admit it, Samson admires the legend of Moby Dick, but no one knows where Moby Dick is, and killer whales are a threat. Killer whales are dangerous when they're hungry. Nobody is safe when a killer whale is looking for food. Yeah, no shit. You seen those creatures hunt? I guess you could say this is a bit... Orca word? No. Also, I do love how the film poses the killer whales as the villains for hunting, yet our main characters are frequently seen hunting and eating octopuses alive. Samson is hanging out with what we assume is his dad, though in the original dub this is actually his mum. Killer whales are dangerous when they're hungry. Nobody is safe when a killer whale is looking for food. Yeah, for whatever reason, the English dub gives his mum a male's voice at the start, but then manages to correct itself later on. Don't be so fussy. They're very nourishing. I guess this was down to some confusion in the dubbing process, as most of the whales do look the same. It doesn't really affect the film, but I just found it quite funny. So Samson and his mum dad are chilling on the sea floor, when suddenly a giant tapeworm emerges from Samson's arse. Ah, never mind, it's just an octopus. Which is... trying to hump him? We sure this film isn't part Japanese? While Samson and his mum dad explore a sunken ship, they discover another young whale named Sally, who explains that she lost her family due to hunting. Their harpoons were flying everywhere. And then my mother didn't move anymore. 
Yep, you can tell this is going to be a fun film. Samson's mum dad says that Sally's welcome to join their herd, and so the three swim off together. Which, uh, fun fact, even though the film refers to a group of whales as a herd, I got lost from my herd when the Iron Beast came. The technical term is actually a pod. The next day, Samson's mum dad is telling the legend of Moby Dick, a legendary giant white whale who was persistently hunted by humans. Nothing unsuitable for children. But Moby Dick would fight back and was able to defeat the hunters. Moby Dick has since disappeared, but legend has it that he will one day return to help save the whales in their darkest hour. The next day, Samson and Sally are hanging out, where Samson's tapeworm problem seems to be getting much worse. As they swim along, they find a polar bear which is hunting a seal. What a cute little bear. I bet he wishes he could be big like us. I love how the two witness a bear murdering a seal, and this is their first thought. Even more so when in the original cut, we actually see the bear dragging the bleeding corpse up on land. Though this is censored in the US release. Now apparently there is a VHS release in the UK which still has an English dub, but would retain all the original scenes that were cut from the US version. Which isn't surprising, as it's clear that we in the UK don't give a shit about putting animal violence in our media. But sadly, there are very few copies of this released, and thus this version is super rare. I was unable to find this version myself, but I did manage to find the original version which has these scenes intact so I'll just intertwine between the two. Samson and Sally's fun doesn't last long, however, as they are chased by a pair of killer whales. The two try hiding in a sunken ship, but Samson ends up sneezing and gives away their position. Which, considering whales can't breathe underwater, it's impressive how he managed to do this without drowning. The killer whales continue to chase them down in what is a pretty freaky chase scene. What the fuck? Just as the situation is looking bleak, thankfully one of the other whales turns up to save them. <gasps> Having just been saved from a life-threatening situation, the two immediately swim off by themselves again, and get talking to two walruses, which leads us to one of the most random scenes in the entire film. <laughs> Yeah, so we suddenly get this weird as hell music segment being sung by two walruses. It comes out of absolutely nowhere and makes no sense whatsoever. What am I looking at here exactly? And the best part is, after all that crazy shit is done, this is our character's response. It's getting dark, we'd better go home. Okay, sure I guess. And then the scene immediately cuts. This entire segment is never acknowledged, and these two walruses are never mentioned again. So I can only presume they died of radiation poisoning soon after. Honestly, it just feels like the filmmakers wanted to have a Disney Silly Symphony style scene in the film, but just had no idea where to put it. Samson and Sally end up getting lost, and are soon pursued by a hunter. Thankfully, the annoying little seagull shows up, and manages to distract the hunter while the two escape. In the original version, the seagull also takes a massive shit on the hunter. Like, Jesus, how long had he been holding all that in? No wonder his voice sounds so constipated. The two whales reunite with their family, but the peace doesn't last long, as they soon approach a large oil spill. Nothing unsuitable for children. Also, too bad it wasn't the seagull. Worst yet is that the hunter is once again back on their trail, so the whales have to take a deep breath and swim underneath the spill. Partway through, one of the whales begins struggling for air, and because the oil blocks up their blowhole, ends up drowning. Interestingly though, because the English version I watched is really dark during this moment, I didn't actually know this whale had suffocated, and thought it was aided to safety by the rest of the pod. And it wasn't until I watched the original dub where it was better lit, that I actually realised what had happened. So yeah, ironically, when this film got lighter, it also happened to get darker. Nothing unsuitable for children. The next day, Samson's Sally and Samson's mum dad are enjoying a nice day of brutal octopus murder. (laughs) 
but Samson appears to be struggling. Yeah, there's meant to be a little side plot here where Samson has a disgust or fear of octopuses, but it never really comes to much, as later on in the film he appears to hunt them and eat them just fine, with no real acknowledgement of it. Later that evening, Samson and Sally go for a swim together, where they begin to realise they have feelings for each other. Now if I'm going to be honest, I don't see the chemistry between these two characters. They don't really play off each other's strengths and weaknesses, and for the most part, Samson's just a coward who lies about being brave, and often ends up getting the two into trouble. So unless Sally's just going through some emotional rebound of losing her mother, I really don't see what her attraction to Samson is. Next day, Samson, his mum dad and Sally all go hunting for octopuses together. But soon a hunter shows up and begins to chase down Samson. Did that boat just make a tire screech sound? Samson's mum dad manages to come in and save him, but unfortunately this is at the ultimate cost. Mommy! Nothing unsuitable for children. Now let's take a look at this death scene for a moment. Mum and child running away from a hunter together. The child runs on ahead. We then hear a gunshot off screen. Only to have the child confused as to where his mother is. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's pretty much the death scene from Bambi. Him a whack with your tail, Mom? Mom? Wait. Mommy? Mother! Where's Mommy? What do you mean, where's Mommy? You literally just witnessed her drown in her own blood. We cut forward in the future. I have no idea how long. Could be a day. Could be a year. The film doesn't specify. But Samson finally decides that he wants to go off and find Moby Dick. Sally says that it's a bad idea, and so, just let Samson go? Okay. I'm not saying Sally is wrong to stay, but normally when you have two characters like this in other films, where one wants to go on an adventure and the other is more cautious, the cautious one normally tags along anyway. It's meant to show the care and strength their friendship has. But here, Sally's just like, yep, okay, good luck to you, hope you don't die. Samson manages to swim south, where he sees a whole range of strange new fish who just seem to be randomly dancing. He comes across an elderly baleen whale, so Samson asks if he's seen Moby Dick. The old whale tells him not to bother, and that it's just best to return home. Samson ignores the whale and continues onwards, but soon encounters some toxic waste, which causes him to pass out. And just as he's about to get eaten, the old whale turns up and manages to save him even though Samson had been swimming in the opposite direction of him for a few hours. The old whale once again tells Samson that it's too dangerous, but Samson once again ignores him. So the baleen whale just leaves? Okay, bit of a random interaction, but it gets weirder, because literally two minutes later, Samson once again encounters the old whale, but it seems like he's died due to an oil spill. First, what the fuck, that cold dead stare is horrifying, especially as Samson tries to wake him up. But second, Samson was swimming in the complete opposite direction to this whale, yet he somehow ended up in the same location as him again. It felt like this old whale should have played a much larger role in the story and should have had more interaction with Samson to make this death more meaningful, but it's literally like, they meet, they separate, Old Whale randomly turns up to save Samson, they separate, now Old Whale is randomly found dead. Speaking of random, Samson is then randomly attacked by an octopus, and I say it's random because throughout the rest of the film, the octopus have had a clear fear of whales, where after a struggle, Samson is left unconscious, where he's then dragged away by a mysterious figure. Holy moly, it must be my birthday. And spoiler alert for the rest of the film, as it has a rather interesting twist at the end, which I think could be best enjoyed by just watching it. So Samson wakes up in what appears to be the lost city of Atlantis, where he finds the mysterious figure who saved him is the legendary Moby Dick. Before mankind went mad, it was a different story. Then it was an honest relationship. <laughs> is it me or did it feel like there should have been a flashback sequence between those two cuts? 
Samson begs Moby to come back with him to help save the other whales, but Moby refuses, stating that man will try to kill all whales and that at least here he will be safe. And so a disappointed Samson has no other choice but to swim back home. This is the part of the film I actually respect. The fact that Moby Dick doesn't go back with Samson is a nicer version. Typically you'd expect him to be talked around or to at least show up later towards the end. But he doesn't. He says he's too old, he's done with this shit and just accepts the world for what it is. While Samson is swimming through the ruins of Atlantis, we get the biggest plot twist in the film as we find out that it's not Atlantis at all, but rather... So yeah, in what happens to be one of the most bizarre twists? The ruined city we assumed was Atlantis is actually New York City, which means that this film is taking place in a post-apocalyptic world. From what we've seen with the coal powered ships earlier, we assume this was taking place around the early 20th century. But now with the discovery of the sunken New York City, we have to presume it's taking place in the future and the civilization has collapsed, so technology has reverted back to a more primitive state. I suppose looking back on this in a second watch, this also explains why there's such a large amount of radioactive waste and massive oil fires taking place. But Christ. I don't think M. Night Shyamalan could have even predicted this twist. This is also the part of the film where the environmental message really starts to drive home, especially with this line said by Moby Dick. Mankind is not vicious, mankind is stupid. Someday man will realize what he's doing. By killing everything in the sea, he is killing himself. When the sea is dead, mankind will die too. But Moby Dick himself also represents the portion of the older generation who acknowledge that things are bad, but at the same time, have no motive to do anything about it. Damn, this film's getting pretty deep. Let's take a look at the clip of the seagull taking a shit to cheer ourselves up. Much better. On his way back home, Samson spots a sinking ship with a nearby small group of people in a lifeboat. Samson approaches the boat to presumably help them, but they open fire on him, so he just ends up killing them. Okay. Again, kind of a random scene and has no real connection to anything else. Eventually, Samson runs into the annoying little seagull who unfortunately still hasn't died yet. Oh, I miss her so much. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. I'm sure you won't. Okay, I take it back. The seagull is now my favorite character in this entire film. Samson then hears some whale calls in the distance, and what do you know, it's his pod again. We cut forward to the future where we see Samson and Sally now have a child, who is also called Samson? Don't swim too far, Samson. Son Samson? Samson's son? Samson's son is then chased by a killer whale, but Samson manages to chase it off, with Samson's son then bragging about how he fended off the whale himself. It's because I hit him with my tail! Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, get it, he's a lying little shit just like his dad, yay! Where the film ends and the credits roll. Yeah, this was an interesting one. I think the main issues for me is that the tone seems a bit all over the place. On one hand, there's a lot of dark moments with some pretty heavy themes being thrown at us, but then you also get these over the top goofy moments. The pacing also feels a bit clunky as there's no real flow to the story, but more like it's a bunch of separate scenes that have been quickly stitched together, with some feeling like they were from a different film entirely. The film didn't look like it had the highest budget, and with quite a short runtime, maybe there was a lot that had to be left on the cutting room floor. The animation is quite interesting though, as the film uses an unusual technique. After the animation is completed on paper, the drawings are photocopied onto card and then coloured and painted with oil pastels, before then being applied to the cells using double-sided sellotape. This is what gives the whales the white highlights we see, and honestly, I quite like it. And I guess the director did too, as he would go on to use this technique for his next three films. But like the tone for the film, the animation style is a bit all over the place, from the more realistic shots to the more wild and cartoony expressions. 
you can definitely feel the Disney influence in this film, with the random silly symphony segment, the death of Samson's mum, and the little lady and the tramp moment. But sadly, it just doesn't have the polish. Saying that though, I did enjoy the overall darker tones and the non-typical outcome of not having all the problems resolved, which kind of leaves the film's ending on a bittersweet tone. I'd say if you want something a little bit darker and a little bit different, and don't mind the lower quality, you can check this one out. But otherwise, I wouldn't recommend wasting too much time trying to hunt this one down.